Hello, everybody. Uh, this is a panel uh, on uh, CNTT. Uh, in this panel, we're going to discuss how does the uh, uh, telco industry benefit from the CNTT and OPNFE outcome. Uh, in, in this panel, uh, we'll, we'll talk about the, uh, the background about CNTT, the goals, and, and what its charter is, and so forth. And uh, with me, I have uh, uh, three panelists. Uh, I am going to be the moderator. My name is Suktiv Kapoor. Uh, I work at Juniper Networks. I'm a distinguished engineer. I'm also uh, uh, on a technical steering committee of Tungsten Fabric as well as uh, Acreno Edge Stack. And along with the fellow panelists, I'm one of the active contributors to CNTT. So having said that, Walter, would you please introduce yourself? Yes, Walter Kozlowski. I'm the principal cloud architect at Telstra in Australia. In CNTT, I play a few roles, but uh, I'm leading uh, reference model development, which we'll be probably talking about this. Yep, thank you. Karim, Karim you wanna- My name is uh, Karim Sevilla. I work for Orange. I'm a network architect for cloud infrastructure and in CNTT I'm contributing to the reference model and I'm co-leading the reference architect and I'm the only one of us. Okay, uh, Thomas, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm Thomas Fredberg. I work for Ericsson and I'm a senior uh, expert in the cloud and uh, IT data center infrastructures. All right, very good, thank you. And now uh, let's, uh, let's get into our, our panel discussion. So I'm gonna open it up for the benefit of uh, those people who may not be familiar with CNTT. So, so, so Walter, uh, since you are the lead of uh, one of the work streams in CNTT, so I'm gonna start by asking you the first question. So uh, in terms of a CNTT's view, so what is CNTT for the benefit of people? What is its history, its goal, what it is trying to achieve, and how it is collab collaborating with the, with the sister uh, open source communities? So would you mind walk us through, please? Yes, obviously, very you know, complex question, but let's just try to make it sure that we can make it very quickly. Uh, if you look at this virtualization and containerization of network functions, it's not anymore in the experiments. It just moved to mainstream technology in our industry. And uh, that means that the telco industry expects uh, the technology will actually safely, efficiently, and inexpensively support the demands of 5G, IoT, Edge, and, and other business uh, which we are in. If you think about it, is that virtualized containerized cloud infrastructure, it seems to be considered now the basic enabler for telco operators, a business current and, and future. Uh, from my experience, and I think that probably you will share, that whoever has been engaged in architecting, delivering, and operating infrastructure cloud environments have faced some extremely challenging dilemmas, like you know, how all those components should, the layers should work together, how to avoid vendors lock-in, uh, how to actually you know, meet the requirements, performance requirements, which are very stringent, and basically you know, how to look for some strategic advice, where to, where to go for. That was the painful experience of the network operators uh, and uh, that led to the formation in June 2019 of the Cloud Infrastructure Telco Tech Task Force, CNTT, uh, within the Linux Foundation networking. So its mission from the beginning was to help operators, technology suppliers, innovators, and other parties al alike in this uh, rough journey. And this goal seems to be simple, uh, but it's critical for our business and for the future. It is actually to show the way by building a generic, flexible, and concrete model that can spawn a select but limited number of reference architectures that can be actually implemented and validated through a defined industry compliance process. 
Uh, CMTT has created an initial reference model, defined infrastructure and workload profiles, capabilities and measurements, and map them together in, in one document. When building the first version of this document, we had in mind um, basic infrastructure as a service, VM-based, actual open stack architecture. The latest, the current Barak release, which is actually released right now, uh, moved to a more hybrid model, uh, where actually we have to work for the co coexistence between you know, different type of implementations, infrastructure, service, containers as a service. Quickly, we have to work with other projects in LFN like Odin ONAP and other organizations like GSM, GSMA and Etsy. And uh, speaking about GSMA, the reference model is actually being published as we speak as a GSMA document, which will actually open this into the industry. Uh, and this, so the work has already started. Thank you. So the, this is GSMA, uh, so whatever the work which we are doing, that will become the, the actual specification, the formal specifications, correct? Yeah, correct, as a PRD, permanent reference, permanent reference document in GSMA, yeah. Perfect, thank you. So now I'm gonna uh, shift towards Kareen, uh, since you represent an operator. So from the operator's viewpoint of view, uh, would you uh, tell us, uh, keeping operator view in mind, how does CNTT outcomes uh, benefit uh, operators? Uh, you know, how would they use its outcomes, the conformance, the RFPs, RFIs, and, and whatnot? So would you mind walking us through that perspective? Yes, sure. So from, from the beginning, the CNTT has adopted a pragmatic approach and uh, the goal to provide uh, content uh, usable for the telco industry. So why is it uh, of great interest for operators? And I will, sp I will speak uh, about Orange in this, in my case. So as said by Walter, operator with um, cloud infrastructure in production or forced to, to note that it is not uh, as easy and as rapid as expected to integrate workloads uh, on uh, their infrastructures. And um, within Orange, we, we spent too much time tuning and testing our infrastructure in order to, to integrate workloads. So uh, we, we think that it's a, a, a good idea to, to standardize uh, telco cloud infrastructure and uh, it would help it will help uh, to integrate workloads and it will help us to reduce our uh, operational costs. So how can we use the CNTT outcome with this objective in mind? So CNTT specification give guidance to build a standardized telco cloud infrastructure. It gives an uh, instarter to develop and implement these infrastructures and a conformance test suite to validate the deployments. So we want to concentrate on a small numbers of uh, cloud infrastructure uh, to simplify the ecosystem. And it's, it's the reason why we are, um, we are requesting, we are adding this, uh, the compliance to CNTT in our RFPs, for instance. So we are requesting NFVIs and VNS vendor to, to become compliant to CNTT requirements, and we think that it will allow to simplify uh, uh, the, uh, our task and, and to make uh, our lives easier. It's the first point. And the second point of interest for, for, for Orange and for the operators, I think it's a test automation. It's essential for us and CNTT is taking advantage of uh, community like OPNV community, which already provides a lot of uh, uh, work to, in order to implement and test uh, NFVI and um, taking benefit of all this work. And uh, uh, for instance, uh, all that's, that's done in project like uh, Funtest, uh, Airship or NFV Bench is big interest for us. So within Orange, we are already running uh, on our infrastructure, the, the test suites provided by OPNV, 
and we ask our suppliers to do the same. And it guarantees that the infrastructure we deploy um, support all the capabilities we need for workloads. So it's a way we are using uh, the CMTT outcomes. Yeah, and, and we hear all the operators are gonna down the road mandate you know that all all vendors uh, must have the conformance to CMTT to be considered yeah. for, for eligible to uh, for RFPs. Yeah. So thank you, thank you for uh, for clarifying that. So now I'm going to turn to Thomas. You know, since you represent a vendor, so let's let's talk from a vendor's perspective. Like, what 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 does it mean? What does CMTT mean? For, for a suppliers or a vendor who's providing the VNFs and the NFVI infrastructure? Sure, sir. Um, I mean, CMTT for us is, is a great place to discuss with the telecom market about the future requirements, the solution space and the technology content to come. And I think that in, in this telecom uh, space, the cloud era really changes things where the vendors and the operators have to align more uh, than previously around what uh, existing and developing technologies we are to use uh, so that we can put requirements on hardware and software vendors as well as open initiatives, open source initiatives. And there, uh, I think we have to realize that a lot of the developing technologies here are driven by large industries like the hardware vendors with their CPUs and accelerators and the software industry with, with a, a lot of software as well as uh, systems like Kubernetes and so on and so forth. And a lot of these are not driven by us as uh, telcos anymore, neither vendors nor operators, but the requirement space are very much driven by the hyperscalers and in some cases high performance computing which means that we got to work together as a complete market segment to have any chance of getting any sort of an impact on this. And, and that's why the upfront work uh, needs it to, to be working together as a big community to have an impact and get our add-ons. But I think it's very, very important as well that we understand that the additions we make uh, should be true additions so that we get an, an easy to operate and a multi-vendor infrastructure where, as Karim talked about, we can have uh, badging and so on and so forth to ensure that the telco workloads work in a smooth way. But early adoption uh, requires early alignment as well. So that when, when we do our technologies bet as vendors, uh, those won't be too much changed because then we just go into system integration for all the diversive type of implementation. When it then comes to the uh, matured solution, uh, then to have a reference architecture, to have a conformance test suite also means simpler um, tests for ourselves and fewer diversive solution to, to support. So I think it's great for us. Yeah, so it's kind of a win for both, you know, so it, it, it conforms to vendors, uh, operators requirement, and it also simplifies things for the vendors so that everybody can conform. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying That's the main that. idea. Correct. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay, so now uh, I'm going to uh, change the subject a little bit. And uh, uh, so as the uh, technology is evolving every day, I remember when we started with CFTT, over the time, uh, new, new technologies have evolved and, and new things are coming up. And, and so this question I'm gonna open up to all of you guys. So whoever wants to take it first, that's fine. So, so what is, what is uh, in the future of CNTT and uh, how, it, how do we, as a body, as a CNTT body, how do we uh, plan on coping up with the technology evolution? So, so you wanna, Walter, you wanna take first? Yeah, I can have a, a shot on this, right? So, while the technology is developing at, a, at the speed of light, as we know, and uh, it's, it's actually very hard to predict what's going to happen. We got some ideas and we want to do them, as Thomas was talking about this as well. 
uh, once one one thing is for sure that from reference model and reference architecture and, and the corresponding implementation we will have to change them and develop them right and examples uh, you know the accelerations technologies uh, programmable networks will coming in uh, as the end next generation as the end sort of it's, uh, it's hanging on us and all of this will be driven probably by 5g iot and, and other use cases uh, one thing which i'm sure is that the success of uh, projects like this will will depend on the community involvement in this work so yeah, that will be from a, a call for the audience actually to start contributing to this project back to you yeah yeah another example is like for instance network uh, networking group which you you actually started last year right when, when when you saw the need for sdn which we eventually folded into rm so that's another example of uh, of the technology evolution yeah so so kareen what 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 would you want to add to that so for us, yes, the, the CNTT is the right place to, to speak about uh, the future of technology and the evolution we want to, to see in our networks. So yes, so for us, yes, we are counting on CNTT to, to develop and to, to contribute to the coming of new solutions for, for operators. Yeah, yeah. Amos, what, what, what would you like to add to it? Yeah, I think that uh, Walter and Karim mentioned uh, a lot of different things here. And, and uh, I think to summarize that there are a lot of new technical uh, challenges coming up. I think we are going from a homogeneous type of deployment in the beginning of the cloud to a more heterogeneous deployment of, of more type of hardwares, different virtualization paradigms, which is necessary to bring out the, the efficiency. Because I think that the name of the game now, once we have transitioned into the cloud, is to gain both operational efficiency as well as uh, cost uh, operation and, and the uh, bits and pieces in there to get them power efficient, for instance. And uh, we got to get in more uh, hardware building blocks, uh, smart NICs, GPUs, FPGAs, which is what CMTD is currently working with. We got to support the cloud nativeness. We got to support the more automation within the cloud infrastructure layers. And on top of that, we got the distribution coming with all the different edge sites. So I think to, to cope with this in the standardization jungles here, um, we got to work pretty hard to work together and align ourselves in what to use, what technologies to use, when to use them, and uh, ensure that we get in the new type of the interfaces coming to be more and more intent-based as well. So it's going to be a very interesting time ahead for us, I think. Yeah, I, I remember like when we started uh, CNTT at the beginning, the main emphasis was an open stack based uh, reference architecture. And then as we progressed, we moved towards the cloud native uh, uh, RA2. And then as we, we were moving along, we, we recognized the networking need and we formed the, the networking working group. And a, as we were moving forward, we recognized that we need to address the edge, the edge use cases, and we formed the edge working group. So, so in other words, uh, uh, over time, uh, this body has continued to evolve and and address the, the the use cases as as they've been coming along. One of the one of the challenges is that quite often we are talking about cloud native uh, technologies which were not really designed for the telco networking, right? And that's uh, a, a major challenge we got now in reference model and reference architecture how to make them really in the telco enabled uh, yeah uh, yeah like near and dear examples of this right yeah yeah so like near and dear to telcos is the the multi-tenancy which is kind of a challenge uh in the in the cloud native kubernetes world and 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 many such similar uh 
uh, issues. So, so I think the body is evolving. So, so uh, having said that, uh, uh, I wanna open it up uh, for the questions for the general audience. Before I do that, let me uh, uh, quickly uh, talk about how to contribute for those people who are listening to this and they are curious that they wanna check it out, uh, what, what this body has put out. And if you wanna become a part of this community and you wanna contribute, let me uh, share a slide here uh, to show you as to how uh, you can uh, contribute to, uh, to this body. You know, so there is a GitHub, uh, you know, you can go to uh, GitHub CNTT and, and, and you can see the, the reference model, the reference architecture conformance, uh, all of these four work stream for every single one of them, which, uh, which Walter and uh, others covered earlier. So, so you can pick and choose uh, whichever area you're more interested in, or you can look at the overall documentation of CNTT and uh, all of that information is there. Uh, you can ping any one of us. Uh, Walter is the, the lead for, uh, for reference model. We all are, all four of us, very active uh, contributor in uh, most of these work streams. So you can reach out to us or, or, or you can uh, uh, send out a, a message on the generic e email uh, list for CNTT, uh, and there are many ways to get involved. So we would love you to come and join us and uh, and participate at this. with this. Now I'm gonna uh, turn it over to the the general audience for to ask the questions. Oh, he started recording. Yeah.